Uh, I haven't heard it, but it's a Petrosian story. I, I don't know whether it's true or not, but obviously Anderson was really, really uh, uh, astonished because this was a very good game. Uh, he lost it, and I think he, you know, he couldn't uh, guess most of my moves. And uh, for him, it was quite a blow. And uh, uh, after this kind of game, you know, you always have some emotional reactions. But that's Petrosian's story, and I, you know, I think there's some exaggeration, but also there is some uh, truth in that. No, oh, it's November 985, you know, when I won my title. That's very simple. Sevilla, December 19th, 87, when I won the adjournment of game 24. It's again, you know, that's, that's the strongest emotional reactions related to the world championship matches. It's a big, but and also, you know, you have you know, the, the, uh, the sharpest reaction because it's, it's so important and the, all your senses are working very hard. Very mm -hmm. vague memories uh, at age five or six. It's, I'm not still sure what was my age uh, where I was looking at my parents playing chess, but that's, that's extremely vague and uh, my mother recalls something. I try to recall something, but it's, it's, uh, it's in the long past and that's why we believe that I was watching my parents playing chess and I learned, I learned uh, uh, some rules and I was quite impressed by the game and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's very hard to, to recognize now what part of the story is, is real story, what part is just further exaggeration because it, it, it was so many years ago. That's why uh, 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 very hard today to uh, reconstruct it because nobody paid attention at the moment when it happened. No, absolutely no. Uh, but it's soon, you know, uh, my talent was discovered and uh, there were some uh, uh, expectations, but uh, obviously in, 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 uh, in the form of, uh, you know, it, it, it's a wish or a wishful thinking that uh, you could be a big player and uh, you could be maybe an ex-champion. I think when I was uh, nine, probably, I was nine, uh, I uh, was given a chessboard there's a chessboard with the world champions around there, and uh, uh, there were 11, including Fisher, and then uh, there was one spot, you know, it's where, which Carpo would occupy soon, and there was another one, and uh, uh, one of my uncles put there my name, said, okay, I hope that you would take this spot, which is, you know, it happens in many families, but in my case, it happened to be true. Um, I, I'm not looking for an immediate attack, but uh, in that game, uh, you know, I felt that position demanded that. It's, uh, it was quite an interesting game, I think underestimated by uh, many commentators, because Anderson you know, was playing a little bit awkward, but he had a positional plan, you know, and uh, with many other players it would work. You know, he wanted to take white squares, and, you know, it's, he played his plan with B5, he you know, he won't put knight on a7, then d5, c6, and the position is closed, and knight comes on c4. I mean, Ulf was thinking long term, and positionally it was very interesting and very good, very good plan. The problem is that white had some uh, opportunities to, to push and to open the position, which he underestimated. And uh, I think that's the whole game, you know, when I start playing h4, d5, you know, h5, you know, was, the whole attack was was quite impressive and that's that's why he you know he was quite quite surprised because suddenly you know white sacrificed a pawn and the the dynamic was 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 excellent and that's what where I felt most comfortable because I could I mean I could recognize it immediately and I didn't spend very much time, you know. For me it was obvious, you know, you just you know you go here and there, you know, before bishop b two and then you you start here. It's I could I could see the whole picture of the of the of the battlefield and uh, I think the speed that I uh, that um, uh, was used to make all the moves made big impression over Anderson as well. No, it's uh, it's obviously it's a sport because people want to know the results, and uh, 
90% of the audience, or maybe 99 even, they consider well results more about anything else. But it has a scientific element, it has element of art, it's, uh, it has many other elements. But I think in its heart, it's, 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 uh, it's a sport and a game uh, with other qualities. And I don't think that we should try to make a final definition because any definition will limit uh, chess to, to, I mean, from its uh, very uh, uh, wide and deep origin. Remember the top? You know, it took for me less time to reach the top than to stay there. Uh, I, uh, uh, it's to stay on the top is more difficult because you have a big competition and uh, it's, uh, it's more difficult to motivate yourself. Uh, that's why, you know, I would anticipate that uh, my work as a world champion is, is more uh, uh, valuable as my work as a challenger. No, I, I guess so. It's hard to describe, but obviously the ability to analyze information and just to come up with the, the optimal way of uh, executing the plans uh, should be quite special and superior to other players. I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, I'm probably the wrong person to, to give the exact definition of my s strong and weak points, but uh, uh, that's one of, the, one of the qualities that I feel uh, gives me upper hand. I don't know, the pressure, the, unless you put the you know, physical pressure on the opponent or you create a really tough atmosphere, you know, using some tricks, everything else, it's, it's just you put the pressure because you, you concentrated, you determined, and uh, you're making good moves. And, uh, and they're scared. That's the, it's nothing to do with, with me during the game. It, it, it's something to do with my record as a chess player, and uh, with the expectations that I will be very tough in this game. So it's more about them than about me. Oh no, good, it was very, very soon because at, you know, age seven when I joined the chess group in the Pioneer Palace, uh, you know, I was uh, already, I was immediately quite a prominent, quite a prominent player. Uh, I was the youngest and I was doing quite well, but um, uh, to have big aspirations. I mean, it took some time, but already at age nine, you know, I was considered to be, you know, the one of the best uh, in the Republic and also in at age 10 in the Soviet Union. I mean, the most talented player. Uh, uh, during my training sessions, I mean, I had more training sessions uh, early the early days, but I, my working day is about six hours. And it's even now, if I'm in training session, it's still six, six hours. Yeah, it's a, every player has superstitions. What, what kind of superstitions? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's superstitions, they come back and forth, but it's, 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 it's always there. It's, uh, it's something you can't avoid because uh, you, you know, when you're under pressure, psychological pressure, you're looking for any, any sign and the superstition is unavoidable. A yeah, certain, yes, that's uh, very simple. Uh, very simple choice. I'm the certain world champion. I was born on the certain of April now, so uh, everything else I'm doing, I'm trying to figure out whether there is a 13 ED in, in a combination of numbers or you can deduct something or multiple or uh, add numbers. It's, it's easy now. You know what, what, what to look for and you always find it. I, uh, I can't underestimate the opponent because I, I'm always looking for the best move from, from his side. And it's, sometimes, you know, I could take it easy and maybe results will be better, but I can't help myself. Uh, extremely painful uh, because normally a game is lost because of his, because of my own mistake and I, I can find a mistake and I am uh, blaming myself and that's extremely painful. Uh, okay. I mean, I, I can, yes, of course I spend time but it's quite easy to, to find what was wrong. After to, to win game. To win game, this is the only way. The only way. In the recent time, Fisher. In the past time, I can hardly say it's this. Every world champion made a very strong impact. Every world champion, I would say Fisher, Tal, Botvinnik, uh, and then probably everyone from Steinitz, Lasker, Kaplan, Kalukin—they all, you know, made huge difference. Huge difference. Uh, uh, 
uh, and recent time again, Botvinnik, Tal, Fischer and myself. Aggressive. That's the aggressive, but very positional. In fact, I, in, when I play my best chess, I do not uh, enforce aggression without uh, um, good, you know, positional um, foundation. And uh, I can sense, you know, the initiative. I know when, where you have to go. And I just, I feel it before many, many, many other players feel that it's around. And when there is a first opportunity to, to, to go forward, to attack, I use it. No, it's probably getting less aggressive because I'm not uh, 25 years old anymore, but I keep the main parameters are still there. You no, I believe in all the pieces. No, in the good hands, every piece is working. Mm. No, I don't have very special preferences. Uh, I can play nearly every position. Uh, I don't like very dull positions. I mean, I can win a dull end game if necessary, but I prefer the positions where the fantasy plays an important role. Now, no matter what is the position, you know, where you have opportunities to uh, use your imagination. No, I, I was never fond of mathematics, I have to admit, you know, it's the it's a general uh, understanding and it's the sort of conventional wisdom that chess players should be very good in mathematics. I, I was quite good, but I always preferred uh, things like literature, history, philosophy, and uh, I'm quite good at that. I'm very good at you know, analyzing information, not making precise uh, uh, calculations, but just to make analysis and to come up with, uh, uh, with the most uh, mm, uh, effective uh, recommendation to act in, 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 in different, different positions. That's why I like very much uh, uh, I like uh, to be involved in, in sort of the analytical work without precise calculations uh, to be, uh, um, without precise calculation to be at the top of the agenda. Yeah, when position is lost, you know, when you are recognized it's lost, yeah. Uh, it's, it, it depends very much on the level of your respect to the opponent. It's the, you don't have any chances, you know, that's the, you can have a very specific advice, but um, normally, you know, you have to resign when the outcome is absolutely clear. I mean, if you have chances, some chances, you have to fight, but if you do not, it's just to make moves for moves, it's, it's not good. No, I think chess should be in the, in the curriculum, but in curriculum for one year in the school, that will make a very good sense. It will improve uh, the whole system, and I think uh, chess uh, has very good qualities to be used as an educational tool to improve results in, in mathematics or in reading in the second or third grade. It can have a very positive effect. It teaches the uh, logic, creativity, uh, self-discipline, concentration and uh, responsibility because there's no one to blame but yourself for your mistakes and uh, I think uh, well if it's if it's well taught if it's a well prepared curriculum it could be extremely effective and I hope that uh, soon we'll uh, see first results mm, yeah I don't see what's wrong with the game where well, again you you doing everything on your own there's no one to influence the result and it's up to you to make all the difference should be democratic. You look at the board and you should find something. You know, it's, it's always, always ideas, always ideas. And uh, I, uh, I feel that even today, you still have plenty of things not yet discovered. And uh, uh, one of the examples when I, you know, my game with Shirov and La Las Linares, you know, in Sicilian, in quite known Sicilian defense to make a new move at H5, it was move nine. And, uh, you know, I was very proud of that. You know, very, very proud. And uh, it uh, uh, proved to be a very good move. And then uh, late it was employed both by Shirov, Topolov, by, you know, all top players. And now White are avoiding this line. I think it's, uh, I think it's, um, you know, it's another proof that there's plenty of things not yet discovered.
experience. Oh no, books books are written by people. That's why you know, unless you check everything, you should not trust anyone. It's uh, no. I mean, the the, the 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 positions where everything is exhausted, and the book says it's winning for white or black, and it's that's that's true. But uh, general recommendations are normally, you know, uh, not not very good, and you have to check it extremely carefully before you employ it. Well, you have to understand it. It's just you know, before you analyze it yourself, before you before you uh, feel what is what is important in this position. I don't think you can. Uh, you can make any decisions and you can uh, play the line. It's too dangerous. Um, it was not played for, for ages, for decades, nearly for a century. It was just out of main line, mainstream. And uh, I, I was thinking how to avoid the main lines of Rui Lopez and just what are the other possibilities. And I felt that the old theory was not uh, well developed. And it's... No, my, my concept always was that everything before 1980 was not properly analyzed, and especially the old openings, they could have a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, hidden resources. And, um, you know, I looked at the, some main lines of uh, uh, Scotch opening, and, uh, and I discovered that black has a bad pawn structure, and it's already, you know, positionally white has some long-term pluses. It's important positional. Uh, white could uh, could be in, could have an upper hand. The bishop on a six is cut. You know, I have good pawns, and that was that was in fact the beginning. And then I just discovered this pawn sacrifice that you know you can sacrifice a pawn to think it to your bishops. It's it was a very positional approach. Then I looked at another line was bishop c5. I discovered uh, some new moves there. So at the end of the day, I came up with a conclusion that. Uh, it's new, but white has very little risk, and uh, it should be employed. And it proved to be very successful. I mean, from 1990, it's being played very widely, and uh, so far, black is still uh, short of finding uh, a proper response. It's along the same lines. I, I like to study all the openings, and I uh, looked at Evans' gambit, and I decided that there are many lines uh, not properly analyzed, and... Uh, uh, in you know, I had some ideas in, in in other lines of Evans Gambit, but obviously every player goes Bishop A7, Knight A5. That's that's t typical, just to uh, not to keep the pawn, extra pawn, but to give it back and just to have an open position. And uh, I had this Bishop E2 idea, and I got this plan with you know just uh, keeping his king in the center, and I thought it was enough for me to to play this. And it was a very nice game again, badly underestimated. I mean, without making really uh, big mistakes, and lost in 25 moves. And uh, I think people should pay more attention to the fact that you know the number two player in the world was losing so badly in such an opening. But obviously that's Evans Gambit, because the pawn sacrifice is not as sufficient and not as uh, 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 positional as uh, Scotch opening. That's why it, it, it didn't enjoy long-term popularity, and I employed it only once more in the series game against Piquet, which I also won nicely. But everybody understands that Evans Gambit is... It's nice. I mean, I can play it. I don't think white is, is, is in danger of losing, but I mean, black can neutralize it quite easily. There is, I mean, there's, there's so much information available now that one advice will not change anything. You know, you just have to be able to look at that uh, and uh, absorb the information. There's one small advice that the beginners should not pay too much attention to the opening theory. I mean, uh, you have to learn a little bit, but not to spend too much time. You know, the end game and middle game, the technical uh, uh, details of those parts of the game are very, very important. I mean, if you play good end game, or if you know something about the end game, if you learn some typical position middle game, that could make more good for you than uh, to study some big openings. Yeah, I mean, my. It's Game approach was very different from Karpov's, and uh, that's a good example. The game was Anderson, but basically, I, you know, 
I believe that there is no opportunity for to attack. You should you should attack. And uh, uh, any long-term positional plan could have a serious disadvantage. I mean, it can be refuted by a very energetic approach at early stage. That I always did. You know, I uh, I had uh, I still have a serious mistrust for long-term positional plans because it can always be interrupted by aggressive action if position is not close. In a close position, obviously, you have to maneuver. But if position has some uh, opportunities for uh, uh, action, you have to be very careful in uh, preparing a long-term assault. <laughs>